Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 10th, 2022. Well, yesterday, toward the end of the day, those sellers really came in in anticipation of the um, CPI number that will be coming out before the bell today. So what's that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Hey, before we get started, um, I have decided that today is a no blog Friday, so there'll be no blog today. A um, couple of reasons. There's not much to really talk about um, when it comes to earnings and things like that today. And I also want to let everyone know that I've decided it's kind of a free for all Friday with the CPI number. So I'm opening up right way options to everyone today. Just go to the hit and run candlesticks website and you can come on over to the right way options trading room. It's free and open to you. And I hope to see you there. Let's take a look at um, the market here, take a look at the indexes, see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Looking at the Dow chart, well, you know, we've been range bound here. We've been stuck in this range and that range has been very frustrating for a lot of folks. It's been frustrating for me too because we've just been chopping in this very wide range. Unfortunately, yesterday those bears really came in breaking that lower side of that trend. Now, the problem that we have here with this is um, kind of twofold. First off, this is officially a lower high now because we've failed at price resistance in the chart. And if I were to pull this back, the longer term trend, depending on how you draw that, is also a failure um, at a lower high. However, at this point, we haven't made a new low. But what we have seen in this chart is the failure of the new high can mean a new low is coming in the Dow. So we're going to want to watch. We, we have some you know, problematic support down in here. There may be a little bit of price support right in here. As you can see with that low and this little price action where we've got one, two, three, four, five candles, maybe six, you could say in there, right in that area, trying to hold support. And the thing is, we don't know what we're going to get out of the data today. So anything is possible, but you're gonna to wanna to watch that pretty closely. Now, if we take a look, at um, our technicals here. Well, we had a little bit more of a problem here in the technicals. Remember, we have been kind of wedged between a 50-day declining 50-day moving average and a rising 500-day moving average. And uh, yesterday at the close, we closed below that just slightly. Now, that could serve as a little bit of price support as well. Um, a 500-day, we could bounce off of that, depending what the data comes out as today. But if we were to fail here, then um, it could be a little bit ugly. So if we rally back, if those bulls find a reason to bounce today, then let's watch this area right in here. We've created a week's worth, or well, about two weeks worth of price resistance right in here. So if the bulls find a reason for inspiration, we'll want to watch this area for resistance to the upside. And if they can push back up through there, then we'll have to keep a close eye on this area. And remember, this is a very wide price action area here in the chart where there's going to be, could be a lot of volatility. And then, of course, if those bears find reason for inspiration, they continue to push lower. Let's watch carefully for maybe some support levels. Then we'd look for maybe a rally back to test resistance and then that possibility that we move on down and retest lows. And by the way, it, it we all know that it's not an odd thing to occur um, in, an, in an index or a market where we actually double bottom. 
Um, so that is certainly a possible scenario that could um, play out here in the days and weeks ahead. Let's take a look at our um, SPY. Now SPY, same problem here. I'm not going to spend as much time there on SPY, but you can see we've got the same kind of problem. We add to it just a little bit stronger price resistance level here in the chart on the SPY, which is unfortunate, but once again, if those bulls can be inspired uh, today and, and we bounce back up, we'll want to be watching that resistance level right through there to see whether or not they can push on through. And if they do, well, we'll be looking up here. If they happen to come on um, and inspire those bears, we're going to have to watch maybe a little price level right in there to hold support. And if that doesn't, then I would look for that possibility of new lows. Once again, we have a lower high um, in our trend and our technicals here aren't um, any better. Um, notice we're back below our 500 day moving average. Our 50 continues to decline. So um, not exactly a comfortable situation for today. If we take a look at our QQQ, well, our NASDAQ, it, it has had quite the struggle here. And as you can see, um, hitting some price resistance in the chart and unable to push through that um, here lately. And then we broke that low. Um, we pushed down through that support yesterday um, heading into this data. So same situation. Um, if those bulls can be inspired, watch this area for resistance. If they can pop through there, then of course that upside of resistance is where we'll want to keep an eye on and if those bears come into play then we'll we're going to look for that push down into here or possibly even new lows in the market remember another lower high is not is not exactly bullish in, for the market now let's take a look at the technicals here here we have more of a significant problem in the nasdaq and noticing that the 50-day moving average is declining but it is already under the 500-day moving average and we've been wearing this 34 ema um, here um, as that resistance in the chart. So breaking down here looks like it could have more energy if those bears um, happen to be inspired on these data points coming out today. So watch that closely. Now let's take a look at our Russell. IWM had been the strongest of the indexes and we continue to hold this upside trend in the IWM. Now notice the pullback yesterday did kind of, it was pretty extreme in that pullback and um, probably no big surprise that it's failing right at a significant resistance point in the chart. But if we push on and down through, then we do have some support in here of that upside trend and price support area in here. So we could bounce off of that uh, for sure. And then we'd start looking at some of these levels up here uh, for resistance if those bulls are inspired. Uh, once again, if those bears are inspired, we, we could easily see that trend break and some support break in that chart. And then our technicals here on this chart are certainly not good, failing at the 50-day moving average. Again, another lower high here um, in this downtrend and not much for technical support below. So we'll just be looking at that surprise price support here in the chart. You know, another thing that we're going to have to pay attention to, there are some big round numbers involved here and markets tend to respond pretty heavily to big round numbers. If you take a look, um, whoops, let's see, I've got it on here someplace. There it is. Um, you can see that SPY is approaching uh, 4,000 um, or the S&P 500 is approaching 4,000. That's going to be an interesting level of either support or resistance. If we can bounce off of that, hey, we're in good shape. If we fall through 4,000, that could really bring on some sellers. So watch that. And the same problem here is with the QQQ. And notice we closed below 
the NASDAQ closed below 3,000. Um, so we have this big area right in here that's going to be important if we lose 3,000 again. Psychologically, 3,000 and 4,000 are those, some of those big numbers in the market that could really disappoint um, bullish traders if we start pushing down through those. So watch those closely. Now, if we take a look at our VIX, our VIX, um, interestingly enough, it did bounce back up. We um, slipped past that trend here just a little tiny bit. Um, and we talked about that um, yesterday, but bouncing up here on the day, uh, back above that 25 handle, um, holding some price support in here. So there is a little bit of concern, fear creeping up. But I got to tell you, with the amount of selling that was yesterday, that happened in the afternoon yesterday, not the kind of fear that I would expect. I would expect it to have been a lot more substantial. And one of the reasons is the volumes remained relatively low, even as we sold off. They did creep up, but they remained relatively low. If we take a look, we have this little downtrend here going on in um, that chart. So that could provide some resistance for um, that fear of spiking up. So it really is going to come down to whatever the numbers are today and how the market reacts acts to it. You know, it's it's never quite as important as what the number is. It's how the market reacts to the number that is important. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now our T2122, we, I've been talking about how this has been extremely elevated and we've been in the bearish reversal zone and yesterday we got that substantial selling uh, pulling us back. Now you, what you want to keep in mind here is if we can find that bullish inspiration in those numbers for today. We certainly have opened plenty of upside opportunity if um, we get inspired by that CPI. If the bears are inspired by the CPI, then you will want to notice that we still have significant downside move that could yet occur um, to reach that uh, bullish reversal zone in the chart. So uh, kind of a tough call. Just be careful here. Um, it's kind of a coin toss today as to what happens when we hit this data point before the bell. If you take a look at our um, T2107, obviously T2107 pulling back pretty sharply. 25% of the stocks holding above their 200-day moving average. Not exactly bullish, continuing in the downtrend, and unfortunately, we're pushing back down here towards some support. Broke a little bit of price support in that chart um, yesterday. T2108, um, kind of the same thing, pushing back. But in this chart, notice that we did a little bit better. 36% of the stocks holding above their 40-day moving average. Um, we're pushing down just ever so slightly through a little bit of price support in the chart. Downtrend remains in in play. So we'll want to keep an eye on this on that data point because it could spring right back up or get much worse um, on the day. Again, our T2101, well, probably not giving us the best of data. And the reason is, is if we look at our index charts, although we saw that selling come in pretty hard yesterday, let's get the daily chart here, and we did creep up ever so slightly on volume, um, no major uh, spike in volume that really says the momentum has has shifted just yet. Now, certainly there is that hint that um, we are in a little bit of trouble because that volume did come up, but it wasn't substantial. So um, just be a little bit careful and cautious today. Let's take a look um, at um, our um, economic calendar for today. And, and that's, you know, the economic calendar is where it's gonna be. Um, we're going to get finally get this CPI number. We're gonna, going to get a read on it. There is talking heads all over the place. Some are saying um, inflation has topped. Some are saying, well, as a matter of fact, the headline on CNBC, consumer price infl inflation in May expected to run sizzling hot in energy, food, and rents as they rise. So we'll want to keep an eye on that because uh, they're on both sides of this. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a pretty um, pretty rough um, article in here from um, 
um, one of the major talking heads of the market saying the Fed is bluffing that they don't have the tools um, to fix anything in inflation. Now, I don't know. Um, you know, a lot of emotion. That's what I'm going to say. There's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of intensity built up about this number. So what that means is if the, when the number comes out, there is that possibility of a substantial move in the market. So you want to be prepared for that. And that's going to happen before the market opens. It could either move sharply higher really fast or sharply lower really fast. And I've been warning about this. So again, it's not so much about what the number is, it's how the market reacts. And, and I would also um, be a little bit careful and watch for that potential whipsaw today. It's one of the reasons I decided to just go ahead and open up the room for today because I don't think there's going to be any trading for me. We took some really nice profits um, on some bearish um, positions yesterday, but I just don't think they're... Um, there's going to be a whole lot of trading for me because I think it could be really wild uh, price action and whips on and uh, that kind of thing. So um, hope to see you in the trading room today. And then we're going to get um, the consumer sentiment. And I do think, I mean, this is my favorite number. Um, the consumer sentiment number tells us an awful lot about how the consumer is feeling. And I have to imagine that as we continue to push up then um, in these food and energy prices that um, the consumer probably doesn't feel that well. Now, yesterday I made some comments. I've been making some comments about record high gas prices and I got challenged yesterday um, in um, the YouTube video saying, you're not accounting for um, inflation adjusted um, situation, you know, there on gas prices. And that's true. I have not um, done any calculations about inflation adjusting. But here's the thing, guys. Um, I, when you look across to all of the media platforms out there, you look at CNA, CNN, um, U.S. gas prices jumped to record high. These are the highest prices we have ever paid in the United States. We have never seen prices this high. So when I say record highs, I'm not talking about any inflation adjusted, um, you know, whatever, you, however you want to look at it. But we're seeing, you know, um, uh, all over the place, uh, seeing that record highs. Um, we're seeing lots of videos, um, record highs. We're seeing uh, from USA Today. Um, why are things um, so expensive and record highs? ABC News, we're the highest we've ever been. Um, that's a record high. And it's because the prices have never been seen this high in the United States. And yes, you could say, okay, that's not fair because of inflation adjustment. But let's remember who created the inflation. Um, and now they're trying to decide how to fix the inflation. So the fact of the matter is our gas prices are at record highs and we are hitting um, new records here this morning. Um, we bounced up here to 4.986 or 4.99. So we're essentially headed for a national gas price average of $5 a gallon. And I have to imagine that is not a happy thing for most of the consumers. It's stressing them. They're running into difficulties all over the place. As a matter of fact, AAA is reporting some of the highest levels of people running out of gas because, um, and, and calling for help because they're not able to fill their gas tanks. They're, they're putting in what they think they need to get them from point A to point B, and they're running out of gas. So um, they aren't feeling comfortable with it. Watch that closely, and I think our consumers feel that stress of both food and energy. So let's take a look um, um, at some stocks. Oh, you know, I forgot earnings, um, and, and it's an easy one to forget. Um, today. Um, there's only three verified reports. Um, one of them that may have some interest to some of you, uh, TIGR. It's popped up here a few times. It looks like it is getting a, a, a bad earning um, result here this morning, pushing down. 
Um, this has been trying to come up, uh, maybe worth keeping an eye on, and that's really the only notable um, of the day here. So probably not going to be anything of major importance um, to the overall market. So um, let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up and if you find these videos to be useful and helpful please click those thumbs up buttons and leave that brief comment and yesterday you guys did a bang up job going through and clicking the thumbs up buttons on the responses to the channel thank you so much it's that engagement with the channel that helps um, it to continue to grow and I just want to say thank you so very much for your kind support of the effort let's take a look at a few stocks now I'm running this video a little bit long because I've got a little bit more time this morning but I want to make this pretty quick um, take a look at some of the stocks that I have been talking about bef before um, a lot of them struggling here a little bit yesterday they had started to move up pulling back with that selling but I got to tell you um, a FedEx is still trying to hold in here and that opportunity if our economy is better than expected if our CPI is better than expected and we see those consumers um, out and willing to spend we know that so much of that spending now is going to be shipped um, everything is going to be shipped to their homes so watch this if consumers are healthy then we should expect um, um, things shippers like FDX and UPS and things like that to show signs of upside so keep a close eye on that could be very very important if we get that um, that push to the upside now on the short side of things guys I think I have to go back and pick on the financials here as you guys saw yesterday the financials um, really struggled hard and were failing at this downtrend in XLF and we burned broke some price support here in the chart. Um, so our financials may be struggling here. And um, although we talked yesterday about Citibank trying to hang in there and Bank of America trying to hang in there, well, doggone it, yesterday they failed some of those support levels that we were watching for them to try and hold. They've broken upside trends. And even though Warren Buffett has Purchase, made a big purchase in Citibank, that doesn't mean this can't still go lower. So watch that carefully. If you're looking for some short trades, there might be some opportunities in, um, um, in these financials. So keep a close eye on those. You might also kind of keep an eye on some of the pay system stocks out here that are struggling. If you see um, SQ, pretty ugly. Um, response here now this is dropping through that trend just a little bit a failure right here in this area watch that close it kind of looks like to me there's a chance that that could move on lower here in the chart now I continue to hear a whole lot of folks just um, you know talk you know glorious things about Microsoft and and uh, Facebook and one thing I do have to say about Microsoft and Facebook is they make money um, I would I would avoid companies um, completely that are running deficits continuing to not make money um, kind of the the unicorn type type companies right now because what folks are going to be looking for is they're going to be looking for those companies that are actually producing and can produce and can show that they have been making money um, i would i would absolutely avoid um, some of these unicorn companies right now that have proven you know they've just been running debt um, relying on um, angel investors and things like that to keep them afloat um, if money starts to dry up those will be the first to be punished really hard so watch that carefully but Microsoft I just got to say failing at this price resistance I can't I can't be bullish on it what I would do is I would wait and watch as a matter of fact I think this is set up for if you don't want to be directionally short set up for a bear call credit spread or something like that and and honestly um, when I look at, at Apple I kind of see it the same way where we're failing at the downtrend here 
um, not holding on to um, some price support levels. Um, so be kind of careful here buying up these stocks. Let them sink. Let them do their thing. Don't fight the bear. Let them go ahead and go on down if that's where they want to go and or short them and then wait for them to bounce. Don't try to anticipate these entries because um, these can move big and um, we may not be finished with this downside move. It, it kind of depends on how that data comes out today. So be really, really careful. One thing I do have to say, guys, is energy. Energy continues to be the place where we're very, very strong and um, it doesn't look like there's a change in that yet. We have had a little bit of a pullback the last couple of days, but if we look at XLE, we're still in a major bullish pattern. So I'd be watching for that next potential entry into the trade. Gotta say the same about natural gas. Now natural gas really pounded down yesterday on a gap down and reversed right back up. So I gotta think we've gotta watch Watch these patterns in here and watch these trends because there is that possibility natural gas just continues to move higher. And um, last but not least, take a look at the com commodity sector. Um, the food um, seems to be running much, much higher. The USDA came out and said that there was um, substantial upside risk for food prices. And um, we continue to see DBC, um, those food prices continuing to accelerate to the upside. So when you're looking at those commodities like corn and wheat and those kind of things, they continue to move up. And, and remember, fossil fuels, like it or not, have a major impact on our food prices. And um, it, it just costs um, an, an awful lot to put a crop in and get it out of the ground in fossil fuels and that trickles it into the price of everything we buy food um, wise so you'll want to think about those because they continue to remain strong so with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day i want to wish you great results in your trading thank you so much for being here and um, i want to wish you a wonderful wonderful weekend and if you get the chance if you feel like you can come on over we'll see you in our trading room today i want to wish you guys all the best we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Take care, everyone.